Welcome to the Inner Circle, where we explore behind the scenes of Inner Space concerts. Who are the performers, the supporters, and the people of classical music? Rachel Desor is a cellist from Hamilton, Ontario, but has toured around the world. Former cellist of Quartet Cecilia, Rachel had opportunities to travel to Amsterdam, Berlin, Dubai, Australia, and many more. With training from Juilliard, Oberlin, McGill, and Banff Center, Rachel is now the principal cellist of Symphony Nova Scotia. Tune in to hear more about Rachel's travel adventures and to learn about her 1929 Carlo Giopsi Obadon cello. <laughs> about your upcoming concert, the World Travel for Two, that you'll be playing with Jack. Me too. And I hear that it's going to be a lot of different pieces from around the globe. What is going to be your favorite piece that you're going to be playing? Ooh, I think it's probably this uh, piece by Kona song that uh, Jack introduced to me. We started rehearsing the other day and it's so rhythmic and it's actually quite hard uh, for the flute in particular. But it's just like a really fond rock that I, a piece I never would have known if Jack hadn't brought it to us. That's awesome. Yeah, we're really looking forward to yeah all the different types of pieces that are going to be played. So it'll be a nice surprise. Mm -hmm. And I know you've done a lot of traveling yourself when you were in the Quartet Cecilia. Where have been all the places you've been, and kind of how was that lifestyle as a musician touring around? Well, at the time, it was it was just fun, and I didn't really think about it. But now, thinking back, I'm like, how did I even do that? <laughs> we were so busy. We were away from our home in Toronto, you know, at least twice a month. I never had groceries in my fridge at home, <laughs> and uh, it was actually really great though, because I mean, we went to Europe a few times a year, and we went to really exotic places I never would have seen without the cello bringing me there, like Dubai and Melbourne, Australia, places like that. Um, but the most challenging thing is getting a cello on a plane. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I do not miss that. Yeah, what were, what were the guidelines, I guess, of getting that approved and feeling safe knowing your instrument was like on the back of a plane? Well, yeah, they, they changed based on the airline and so it was very complicated. I spent numerous hours on hold. I know the Air Canada hold song by heart. Um, <laughs> but mainly I had to buy a seat uh, for it next to me and then strap it in in various ways. So, yeah, glad to be in Halifax and not getting on any planes anytime soon. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any favorite place that is kind of special in particular out of all the places that you've found yourself? Yeah, I keep thinking about Amsterdam, which I just really loved, but playing in the Kleine Saal, the small hall at the Concertgebouw, and it's funny what you remember when you're on tour, but I think the thing that just sticks in my mind was the stage manager there. <laughs> because every place you are, there's different staff and they're usually amazing, and, but at this particular hall, there's a man who takes his job incredibly seriously with a lot of joy. So we remember being backstage and there's just a curtain between the backstage and the hall. And he would be back there and he would kind of give you a pep talk, which usually like stage managers don't do because like it's not their job. But he would just be like, you're ready, it's going to be great. You know? <laughs> and then he would pull back the curtain with this artistic flourish and we just felt very ready to go perform in a way like no other. That's great. <laughs> it sounds like he was an interesting guy. Yeah. <laughs> so with uh, the cello, you've been recently doing Baroque cello, I hear. How has that been different for you? 
Well, I've been dabbling. Um, <laughs> actually, with the, the symphony here, we have Rogue series, which I really love. So I've been getting to flex that muscle a bit more. And since COVID happened, I was like, well, I'm at home. I have time to restring my cello with the gut strings. And I actually bought my first Baroque bow. And it's just been really great to discover music, but less known music to me and the specific role of the cello in Baroque music as the bass line and the duo to singer. And it's just really fascinating to delve into. So you mentioned strings and a bow. What are the differences between the Baroque strings and bow versus the modern? Well, the main difference is that Baroque strings were made out of gut, so sheep gut. And now we play on steel strings. So gut strings have a very different sound. They have the overtone series is much more present. They ring, they're open, um, but they're quite temperamental. So <laughs> they go out of tune if you blink at them. Um, so it's, it's a bit of an adjustment, but it's a really nice sound world to get into. And the music really seems to work in a more interesting way when you actually use those strings. The other main difference is the pitch. So we mainly tune to A440 right now. But in the Baroque era, there was a wide range of what people tuned to. So we end up sort of choosing to be at 415 or 430, which, you know, for a modern musician like me, thank goodness I don't have perfect pitch, but still, like it's an A sound like a G sharp can really do your head in, but <laughs> you get used to it. And it's, it's just neat to play in this different world of resonance. And what about the bow? Is it made with different hairs or is there different? The main difference in the bow, I would say, is the shape of the stick. So um, I wish I should have brought my rogue bow, <laughs> but the rogue bow is sort of more straight and it has a very uh, tapered tip and the modern bow has a, a curve in it. And I don't pretend to understand the physics of all the things that that does, but it feels very different to play with and it makes very different gestures possible. So you were talking about the bow and the different shapes of it. So the st strings itself or the hairs are the same, but the shape will kind of determine the sound difference. Yeah, I think that's accurate. And there, there are probably less hair as well. I just noticed that it just doesn't feel like a stick ahead of hair on that bow. But, yeah. uh, but I'd say the main difference is the stick. That's really interesting. So what have you found yourself playing recently or what are some things that you hope to be able to play? Well, actually playing all of the Bach suites, there's you know six solo suites for a cello, which are sort of the staple cello repertoire. Yes. To actually play <laughs> them all on a broke bow would be uh, a really great goal. I should write it down. It's a good goal. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it's really interesting to learn about yeah, the different time periods and what they used back then versus what we use now with our instruments and yeah, all the developments that have happened. But then also, you know, you get that sound difference if you can't make the same sound on your modern one as they did back then. So we have to adapt and yeah, go back to the roots of using those strings and those bows to kind of make that sound come alive again. So I think that's really neat of, yeah, us adapting in that way and bringing that sound back to what it originally was supposed to sound like. Yeah, I just find it enriching. You know, I really, I enjoy any interpretation. It doesn't have to be historically accurate as long as there's something interesting about it. But there's something about, as you say, retracing that history that just, makes the music come to life in perhaps the way it was meant and it's just really interesting. Yeah. That's great. It was so nice to have you Rachel and we really look forward to your concert coming up on March 2nd, hopefully in person. <laughs> <laughs> we'll cross our fingers for now. Yeah and we hope to learn more about you and hear your Baroque cello. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. The 
Inner Circle theme was composed and performed by Caitlin Wheaton. This podcast was created by Caitlin with production support from Joe Pops of Joe Pops Design and Inner Space founder and artistic director Jack Chen. For more information on Inner Space Concerts and to get tickets for our live and online events, go to innerspaceconcerts.ca. Inner Circle is an Inner Space Concerts podcast. Thank you for listening.